Okay. Now, uh, without any uh, further ado, uh, I would like to invite uh, Honorable Malvagnam Tilakaraja uh, to give opening remarks. Uh, Honorable Tilakaraja is the current treasurer of the Sri Lanka Parliamentarians Forum for Evaluation. Honorable Tilakaraja, the floor is yours. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Asiti, and uh, good morning and good afternoon, good evening uh, for all our friends who have joined from the various parts uh, of Asia. Uh, yeah, it's a very great moment for us uh, being an Asians and that uh, involving in the evaluation matters in each and every country where we have, uh, we are thinking on that, that evaluation makes value on our projects and programs, even uh, policies uh, and act as well in our life as well. So that uh, just I would like to share with you as an organization, a Sri Lankan Parliamentarian Forum. So what is the achievements that we got as a forum uh, in, inside the parliament, that how that could be uh, support us each and every country in the world or in the, in the region where the Asia Pacific uh, Evaluation Association making us together to have a forum in each and every parliament where we are representing. So as a parliamentarian, we, we heard about that uh, evaluation and all, but we, it's not institutionalizing in Sri Lanka. Even even academic line, even evaluation is not in high profile. You know that there are some few organizations they involved with matter of evaluation. So as a parliamentarian groups, we had some mentors inside the parliament, especially the president of the Global Parliamentarian Forum, Honorable Kabir Azim, the member of parliament of Sri Lanka. Uh, and the other members from the Bangladesh and uh, Nepal, they have already started that global parliamentarian forum. So as a Sri Lankan parliamentarian forum that we also join hand with them as a volunteer group. There is no any mandate to have such a forum inside the parliament in Sri Lanka. But we understood what's the importance of uh, the evaluation. Then we, we got together, we make ourselves involvement as volunteers that we take part and we had contacted with our own parliament to make this as an institutionalizing uh, process inside the parliament and in the country. Then we had contacted with the uh, other OPEs and other organizations which, uh, which related, work, work related with evaluation. That we were able to form our organization uh, as a formal way. Then we, 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 we proposed our uh, post to our parliament to make it as a mandatory committee still in the process, but we, we think that it could be, uh, 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 you know, uh, formed up uh, in, inside the parliament even. So today that we are thinking that Sri Lankan experience would help to the Asian parliaments uh, with, uh, since that parliamentarians and parliament research staff or the staff who are working inside the parliament for research and evaluation works, all we are here so that we have the responsibility to make this forum as a formal forum uh, to to create the environment, enable the environment and valuation in the Asia Pacific region, especially president, the present president, Dr. Asela Kalugampitiya, and the team supporting us to have such a uh, forum. So I congratulate uh, to our proposed uh, forum here today, and I, I would like to join with you all for the uh, in our future journey. Thank you very much, Sajidhi. Thank you very much, Honorable Tirakaraj, for your warm welcome and explaining the basic, uh, the grounds of this forum. And uh, today we have two distinguished speakers, Kiran Kuli and Romulo, Dr. Romulo Rima, uh, Mira, to share their insights with us. Before that, we thought it would be great if we can get to know uh, who's joining with us today. So we invite all of you to introduce yourselves in the chat box by putting your name uh, and uh, from uh, which country are you and your position. And of course, do not forget to mention why you are interested in evaluation. So just to uh, give a brief introduction on this event, uh, upon the request from um, many parliamentarians and parliaments, uh, the Asia Pacific Evaluation Association, along with the engaging parliamentarians for demand and use of evaluation uh, action group, uh, which is a part of uh, Asia Pacific Regional Evaluation Strategy, uh, is launching the Asia, Asia Pacific Parliamentarians Forum for Evaluation today. 
The Asia Pacific Parliamentarians uh, Forum for Evaluation will play an important role in uh, promoting and raising awareness on evaluation among policymakers in the Asia Pacific region. And this forum will also be an opportunity for parliamentarians to network with other parliamentarians uh, interested in the field of evaluation. So, and the chat, uh, let's go to chat. Okay, we have Anjana from Sri Lanka, uh, who's uh, working as a research officer. Uh, please uh, uh, put your name and uh, where are you from? And just uh, don't forget to mention, as I said, don't forget to mention why you are interested in uh, this field. Um, So uh, while our uh, participants are introducing themselves, we have uh, two quick four questions for you from our speaker, Kiran Crowley, to see what is your opinion on evaluation and its use. Uh, the first question is for all participants and it is a multiple choice question. Uh, in other words, uh, you can choose one or more answers for this question. Uh, production team, uh, can you please launch the poll now? Randhika, can you uh, launch the poll? Production team. Okay, we have uh, Honorable Ramesh Padyal from member of the provincial party uh, parliament from Nepal. And he's saying that he's interested in evaluation as he's a member of the public account committee within the parliament. Welcome, Honorable Ramesh Padia. Uh, we have uh, a member of parliament, Honorable Latu from Bhutan. Uh, welcome, Honorable Latu. Uh, production team, can we launch our first uh, question? Okay. There you go. So uh, which one, uh, which of the following functions of parliament do you think uh, that might benefit from better use of evaluation? So this is a multiple choice question and uh, you can choose uh, one or more answers for this. Yeah, I can see uh, our participants uh, uh, answering the question, the poor question. You have like 30 seconds to answer this question. can see the answers are coming up. Okay, your time ends now. Uh, production team, please uh, uh, close up the poll. Yeah, so we have 78% uh, uh, saying that uh, Low making will benefit from the better use of evaluation. And uh, the next choice is the oversight of the executive. And 30, only 33% has voted for the representation of citizens. So uh, if you have any further comments or thoughts on this question, uh, please feel free to mention it in the chat and we would love to hear more from you. So quickly going back to uh, introductions, uh, we have, uh, Vanathan Pong from Cambodia. Uh, welcome you, uh, Vanathan. As I remember, you were participants from the tech training as well. And if any of this parliament, uh, our participants are willing to, you know, unmute themselves and introduce and just tell us why they are interested in evaluation, that would be great. So please, uh, you can uh, uh, choose the raise the hand options and we will quickly get back to you. And we have, uh, as I said, okay, do we have a um, uh, participant? Uh, this is Ataullah Khan, Special Secretary from Peshawar, Pakistan. Uh, good morning, uh, Ataullah. Uh, do you want to say anything about that? Why you are interested in the evaluation field and why you participate on this event today? Uh, yes, I uh, um, I can see. Uh, 
from the last uh, say six eight months i have attended you know those six online courses and uh, this i have been saying continuously that uh, uh, most of our projects do not actually are based on uh, proper evaluation they go through you know the, the old uh, style uh, feasibility studies which does not include complete evaluation steps which can relate the past the present and the future uh, prospects of a project whether that is the the, the law making whether there is representation within the parliament whether there is any any physical project so so evaluation uh, uh, i understand is one of the basic thing for any creativity development and uh, future projects and sustainability as well thank you thank you uh, dr paula for sharing your thoughts with us and let's go to our second question and this question is only for our parliamentarians and it is a single choice question uh, here you can choose only one answer uh, production team can we launch the second poll question now okay here you go um, so as a parliamentarian what is your interest in using evaluations uh, you can select the most relevant response as you think so the first uh, one is the fulfilling my uh, constitutional duties as an elected member of parliament uh, furthering my personal and professional development delivering benefits to my constituents and strengthening the achievements of my political party again honorable parliamentarians will be given 30 seconds to answer this question and i invite our research staff uh, uh, members to share their views regarding this question in the chat box yeah time starts now Okay, I think uh, most of uh, uh, the participants, the parliamentarians, has responded uh, the poll question. And if you are still not have responded, please go ahead. You have five, four, three, two, one seconds. Okay, let's end the poll. Thank you. So the majority has chosen. Okay, there are two uh, answers with the uh, majority of the responses. Uh, the uh, furthering my personal and professional development and delivering benefits to my constituents. And it's 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 uh, uh, surprised to see that strengthening the achievements of my political party. Uh, none of uh, the participants have selected that. So. uh let's uh think uh, we have and also uh, we have our research staff members uh, sharing uh, their views on using evaluation in the chat box as well so in, uh, from sri lanka mr jagdeep is saying ensuring accountability and evidence informed law making so thank you everyone uh, for actively participating and sharing your thoughts and views uh we are happy to see uh, that you are very enthusiastic and keen on learning about evaluation and uh, most importantly using it uh, as well your input will definitely help us to build up a discussion throughout the upcoming segment okay now it's uh, time for me to invite our distinguished uh, speaker uh, kiran toli to present about role of uh, parliaments in evaluation okay one minute yes akuran is an independent evaluation consultant and a co-author of the politics of evidence in parliamentary oversight over to you kiran thank you very much hasiti thank you very much honorable tilaka raja uh, for your introduction and welcome to all the participants in today's very exciting launch of the asia pacific parliamentarians forum for evaluation very interesting to see your responses to the poll questions there i hope that the short presentation that i'm going to share with you will perhaps shed some more light on the responses that you selected um 
advanced slide, please. I'd like to start uh, the presentation just by reflecting on evaluation and the three recognized functions of Parliament. Advanced frame, oversight. Um, the parliamentary oversight function, as we know, is one of the cornerstones of, of democracy. It's a means of holding the executive to account for its actions and for ensuring that it implements policies in accordance with laws and budget passed by Parliament. In order for parliamentarians to carry out oversight effectively, as we've already heard, elected members of Parliament really need to have access to reliable information and evidence. While we often have statistics, facts and figures that can provide raw data on policies and programmes to parliamentarians, evaluations take that information one step further. Um, and they use that information to prevent an informed appraisal, often by independent experts, on the relevance, efficiency, effectiveness, sustainability and impact of policies and programmes. I think one of our participants referred to some of those criteria just a few moments ago. So, as a parliamentarian, having access to evidence packaged within an evaluation makes the parliamentarian's job of oversight much easier. And in fact, institutionalizing the use of evaluations in parliaments provides a really valuable source of evidence for the oversight of government's policies and programs. Advanced frame. The second function of parliament, as we all know, lawmaking. Lawmaking is really one of the core processes of parliaments. It's also an important responsibility of parliamentarians. All of you who actively engage in the often lengthy process of uh, making law through the review, debating of bills, engaging with committees, taking evidence from experts and public interest groups, proposing amendments to bills, and then finally debating again before enacting bills into law. Here, evaluations of existing and proposed government policies can really provide valuable evidence to feed into the lawmaking process at all of those stages that I've just mentioned. Legislation that's grounded in judgment based on evidence such as evaluations is much more likely to deliver benefits to citizens than legislation and policies based on opinion, conjecture, or even particular political agendas. While the evidence generated by evaluations provide valuable input to legislation and policy making generally, law can also help create an enabling environment for legislation. And this is where the process works and the other way around. Some parliaments have been involved in ensuring that the use of evaluation to assess government programs is actually written into acts of law. And some countries even write it into their national constitutions. Uh, for example, the use of evaluation was incorporated into the national constitution of Nepal in 2015. Uh, and in due course, that led to the drafting of a national monitoring and evaluation act to guarantee that government programs and institutions are formally evaluated and monitored on a regular basis. Advanced frame. The third key role of parliament, of course, is representation. Um, the first two functions of oversight and lawmaking are carried out by parliamentarians as representatives of those who elected them into parliament. So for a parliament really to maintain its legitimacy, it's critical that the accountability of elected representatives to voters continues throughout the parliamentary term and not just at election time. To enhance that accountability, citizens should have ample opportunities to learn about and provide feedback on the work of government, parliament and individual parliamentarians. So sharing the findings of government policies, uh, sharing the findings of evaluations of government policies and programmes, and even of parliament itself with the public can really be a powerful way of strengthening accountability to citizens and maintaining their faith in the democratic parliamentary system. Advanced slide. 
So those were some of the, if you like, the theoretical reasons of, as to why evaluations is a really important uh, component in, in parliamentary business. Let's hear just briefly about some practical um, reasons which have been generated by parliamentarians themselves. And these responses came from parliamentarians who were gathered at the Global Forum of Parliamentarians in Kathmandu way back in 2015. However, I think these reasons are really still very relevant and I'd like just to share some of them with you. Advance slide, please. So parliamentarians gathered at that global forum um, voiced the fact that the use of evaluation by parliament is important because it strengthens public accountability, it increases transparency, it helps maintain the balance of powers. And here, I suppose we're talking about the balance of powers between parliament and the executive. It helps maintain the efficient oversight of parliament. It protects the interests of all stakeholders. Evaluations usually, if they're quality evaluations, take into account the role of a wide range of stakeholders in government's policies and programs. It helps improve public policy. It's based on evidence from evaluations. It enhances the quality of legislation. It's built on real data. Evaluations contribute to efficiently allocating the budget and inform planning. And they're included in the people, they include the people in monitoring and evaluation, particularly if evaluations are shared with citizens and citizens are able to feed into the business of conducting evaluations. Advanced slide. Finally, I'd like to share with you a simple framework um, that we actually developed, the Center for Learning on Evaluation and Results, to support conversations with African parliamentarians to really try and better understand some of the factors that influence their inclination to use evaluation evidence as part of their role in parliament. Advanced slide. So this is called the Parliamentarian's com uh, Compass. And like a conventional compass, the Parliamentarian's Compass has directions that really help navigate the process of lawmaking, representation and oversight. Advanced frame. So to the north of the compass, we have the MP's constitutional role as a legislator and a custodian of oversight. Every MP partakes in a swearing-in ceremony where they undertake a solemn oath to uphold the constitution with principles such as truth, integrity, equality, transparency, and accountability. Parliamentarians that we spoke to agreed that using evaluations as a source of evidence really helps them fulfill this important constitutional role that they have. Advanced frame. To the east of the compass is the parliamentarian's um, political party, an important influence in everything that they do. Party manifestos, um, as you know, are the public declaration of policy and aims, often issued in advance of an election. For governing party parliamentarians, uh, evaluations can provide a valuable source of evidence to demonstrate that their party is actually delivering on their manifesto. While for those in opposition, evaluations are valuable to provide them with an objective and independent assessment of government's performance. So political party, an important part of the parliamentarian's compass. Advanced frame. To the south, like MPs' obligations to constituents, and those of you who are elected members will know that constituents are certainly very important to people to, to take care of. They're important stakeholders, they have interests and priorities that need to be met if parliamentary representatives are to be returned to parliament. So here, evaluations can demonstrate the benefits of policy to citizens, while citizens themselves can be valuable sources of evaluation evidence as to whether policies and programs are actually working for them. Advanced frame. Finally, to the west of our compass lies personal and professional development. Um, 
And beyond the MP's representational role, many have ambitions of, of higher office, uh, both within the party and indeed within in government. African parliamentarians that we spoke to noted that being seen to contribute effectively, for example, during debates, using evidence from evaluations, was one way that they could demonstrate their professional standing both to the Speaker of Parliament, their fellow parliamentarians, party officials, and constituents. So professional uh, and personal development, an important factor, uh, an incentive to use evaluations for parliamentarians. So I hope those short uh, slides uh, and ideas that I've thrown in help uh, shed some light on, on why we think evaluations are important uh, for parliamentarians and in parliament. We look forward very much to hearing your views as parliamentarians and parliamentary researchers and other stakeholders as to why you think evaluations have a central role in our, in our parliaments. Thank you. Thank you, Kiran, for that informative and thought-provoking presentation. I think now our participants have a better idea about how evaluation connected to the key functions of parliaments and the role of parliamentarians. So we have a discussion segment scheduled after the next presentation. Uh, so if you have any questions for Kiran or any comments, please put it in the chat box. We will address them in the discussion round. Now, I would like to invite Dr. Romulo uh, Miral, the Director General of the Congressional Policy and Budget Research Department, uh, House of Representatives in the Philippines, to share the purpose of the forum and the experience uh, from uh, the other regions. Dr. Romulo, the floor is yours. Thank you, Asiti. Uh, good day, uh, everyone. Uh, I can see that uh, there are um, graduates here of uh, my fellow graduates of the International Program uh, for Development Evaluation Training. And I'm very happy to see them at, uh, join us. Uh, after the training, I was um, uh, very fortunate that, uh, to be invited to small group discussion on uh, how um, to promote uh, the demand and use uh, for evaluation of parliaments. And I think that's a very important uh, uh, consideration. So um, in those um, brainstorming session, um, I just realized that um, during the training that I attended together with, uh, with you, uh, there were a lot of suggestions um, and I bright ideas. And so um, I suggested that to uh, President As Asela and to the APEA staff uh, who, who were in that uh, brainstorming session, if it's possible uh, for us to uh, create a uh, Dr. Romulo, uh, you're muted. Yeah, sorry. By which the, the other uh, participants of it's the table uh, can, um, can join us and uh, have a venue to, to discuss on how we can really uh, promote the use and demand uh, for evaluation by uh, parliamentarians and, by, and in the parliament. So next slide, please. Uh, and so uh, this idea of organizing, uh, next next slide, uh, an uh, Asia-Pacific Parliamentarians uh, Forum for Evaluation came about uh, with, uh, with the objectives of uh, raising awareness and uh, promoting evaluation among policymakers in the Asia Pacific region, and uh, to enhance the evaluation capacity of individual parliamentarians in the Asia Pacific region. Uh, also, to encourage uh, parliamentarians to work towards the institutionalization of evaluation to inform evidence based decision making and policy making. And uh, finally, to create a network, a venue by which uh, parliamentarians and um, uh, those working in parliaments um, can um, regularly uh, communicate and discuss uh, on how to really promote and uh, use evaluation uh, in the work of parliament. And so this uh, uh, meeting, uh, this inauguration of the um, Asia-Pacific Parliamentarians Forum for Evaluation that came about. So next slide. Actually, uh, these uh, forums are not 
uh, it's not nothing new, ano? Um, I don't know. Because, uh, um, there are a number of uh, forums already organized. Uh, I I was also very fortunate that to participate in uh, one of those uh, global parliamentarians forum, and this is the uh, global parliamentarians uh, forum for evaluation that uh, was held in uh, uh, Colombo, Sri Lanka, and um, I was. Um, really amazed uh, because it's really the, my first time to see uh, legislators and parliamentarians as well as other uh, stakeholders um, really um, valuing the importance of um, the role of uh, parliamentarians or parliaments in um, in promoting evaluation and the use of evaluation in their, as uh, Karen has mentioned, in their function as uh, lawmakers, uh, representatives of their electorates and um, as overseers of the of the executive or the or the government uh, actually uh, in the philippines um, it seems that um, evaluation has not uh, taken um, initially when i when i when i attended this uh, forum so I, I was fortunate to attend this forum because no parliamentarians uh, from the from the Philippines uh, signified that uh, their intentions to join uh, I, for whatever reason, probably with the conflict of, uh, with the, some other schedules. But, um, and um, probably also because of the lack of appreciation on the importance of evaluation. Because uh, while um, uh, evaluation has been, um, uh, the importance of evaluation has been discussed in the government, it is ba it basically, uh, is basically confined in the executive department. In fact, there are a lot of uh, um, UNICEF, for, for instance, the United, and the uh, uh, UNDP are very um, uh, very immersed in terms of uh, uh, promoting evaluation towards the uh, in support of the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals, and uh, and the executive department in our country has been um, uh, very active on this. In fact, uh, they have already established uh, a national evaluation policy framework, care of an, an, an administrative order. But again, uh, this uh, framework or the use of evaluation, the discussion about evaluation has been confined basically in the executive uh, or in the government. And so um, it was really an eye-opener for me to, be, uh, to participate in this uh, Global Parliamentarian Forum for Evaluation and uh, it really inspired me a lot. Um, um, and again, based on the objective, uh, on my part, I think it has achieved its objective by uh, uh, for me to realize the importance of an enabling environment uh, for a nationally owned, transparent, and systematic standard evaluation process. And uh, the need to enhance the evaluation capacity of parliamentarians and national parliaments because um, th at that time, basically the intervention or the uh, the knowledge of um, uh, of evaluation is not basically something new to to the legislator. And um, again, to mobilize and advocate the international and community support, I think is very important for for parliaments to really um, be part of this um, of uh, of this movement towards the use of evaluation in uh, policy making and decision making towards the achievement of national development goals and the sustainable development goals. And um, I think that these objectives are not limited to the, the global parliamentarians for evaluation, because as I, again, um, uh, as based on the assignment that was given to me, I look into the experience uh, other forums, uh, uh, other parliamentarian forums in evaluation, and I've seen that uh, there are actually already a number of them, and now one uh, um, one example that uh, really caught my attention is the African Parliamentarians Network on the Development Evaluation, which has been uh, existing for quite some time already. And uh, its objectives are, again, uh, basically the same, uh, to raise awareness and uh, build capacity of parliamentarians in Africa to make use of evaluation to promote development and inclusive growth and assist parliamentarians in contributing uh, to the development of a culture of evaluation at all levels of government and uh, share across countries in Africa and examine the potential for international cooperation and support towards strengthening um, uh, evaluation in the parliaments of Africa. Um, 
And there's also this uh, Sri Lanka Parliamentarians Forum for Evaluation, which is uh, actually more or less confined in Sri Lanka. And it's basically shared the same objective of promoting evaluation in, in Sri Lanka and institutionalize the use of evaluation within the parliament of Sri Lanka. Uh, actually, after uh, my experience in the uh, end up uh, attending this Global Parliamentarians Forum for Evaluation, I really um, um, worked uh, to, to read more on this, to, uh, to be more immersed on uh, what has been happening in our country regarding uh, the status of uh, evaluation and the sustainable development goals. And um, we initiated actually the, the drafting, our office initiated the drafting of a, of a bill uh, institutionalizing a national evaluation policy. That, uh, will not, that will cover not only the executive, but all branches of government. And uh, this bill actually created uh, an, uh, an interest within the parliaments and um, uh, it was sponsored by, uh, by members of Congress. Actually, there were, there were two versions of the bill that was sponsored in the House of Representatives and another version that was sponsored in the, uh, the upper house, the Senate of the Philippines. And uh, this created really an interest on... Um, on the use of evaluation and um, and towards really giving a mandate uh, for the government to uh, uh, use evaluation in decision making and policy making. So next slide. Um, again, going back to this um, uh, selected parliamentary forum for evaluation, um, we've seen that um, this parliamentarian forum uh, actually can be differentiated according to their membership. Of course, when the global parliamentarians for evaluation consists of uh, all parliamentarians across the world, um, but it, again, this is a very big uh, audience, and um, I think the importance of a regional network somehow uh, allows uh, for more uh, um, closer uh, discussion of uh, having a um, uh, more uh, or less the same situation, a com a common uh, issues and challenges. So I think the development of a regional evaluation uh, uh, group like this African Parliamentarians for Evaluation uh, Network for Development is uh, along this line. And uh, of course, the Sri Lanka, which is more national. So if we look at the members of, for example, of the African Parliamentarians Network, you'll see that uh, they have the founding members, the full members, which consist of the parliamentarians of the African member countries, the associate members, which consist of uh, former parliamentarians and uh, individuals or groups that are working with parliaments uh, which are interested in uh, promoting the use of evaluation. And uh, affiliate members are uh, members uh, uh, outside of Africa, which are also interested in the work of the African Parliamentarians Network for Development Evaluation. And uh, the partners are actually development partners or some uh, uh, par institutions that uh, the, the, the forum or the network think that uh, will be of help uh, in, uh, to, the, to the network in terms of uh, promoting the use of e evaluation. And of course, uh, you have the Sri Lanka, which consists of the current on, uh, uh, or former members of uh, the Sri Lankan parliament. And, uh, and and um, again, I, when I look an, into these uh, different uh, uh, forums, parliamentary forum, I can see that there's um, uh, a steering committee uh, in the case of the uh, global parliamentarian, uh, an executive committee in the African Parliamentarians Network, and so with the Sri Lanka, which uh, handles the day to uh, the day to day work or the activities, the, the designing the agenda or moving forward the. Uh, the uh, the work of the network. Um, I am into, into my last slide. Uh, next next slide. So um, again, when I look into these experiences of the other regions, and uh, I try to uh, design a, a very basic, a simple um, a, a theory of change or logical framework for the uh, as the rationale for the, the, uh, the uh, establishment of this parliamentary forum for evaluation. Uh, which gives us um, um, the idea or the relevance of or the importance of establishing this uh, this uh, forum. Um, as um, I can start with probably starting from its uh, the, the intended impact, which is actually to uh, 
to so that par uh, uh, parliaments or parliamentarians uh, can use evaluation evidence in a lawmaking, oversight, and representation that uh, would positively impact our citizens' lives and the achievement of national development goals and the sustainable development goals. So that is really the, the intended impact of uh, uh, why we uh, are interested in uh, forming this uh, uh, forum for evaluation of the Asia-Pacific uh, parliamentarians. And um, of course, in order to achieve this impact, we can uh, uh, look at the more immediate outcome, which uh, is to uh, which is actually defined or shown already in the different goals and objectives of the different uh, uh, parliamentarians forum that I just uh, presented earlier, which is one, uh, to provide better understanding of the role of parliamentarians in the evaluation ecosystem or the national evaluation system, uh, to uh, the establishment of parliamentary systems, rules and procedures so that evaluation can be effectively used uh, in the work of parliament, and uh, of course, uh, to promote, um, to develop the individual capacity of uh, uh, parliamentarians and their support staff and their commitment to the use of evaluation evidence. And um, these are the desired outcome that, or the goals that um, uh, many of the forums have, uh, have, um, have uh, uh, mentioned in, uh, in the establishment of, the, uh, of their forums. And uh, for this, um, uh, to, in our today's meeting, I would like to focus on what can be uh, what would, do we intend, the immediate output that we intend um, by organizing this uh, forum uh, for evaluation among the Asia-Pacific parliamentarians? I, I think, it, again, as uh, we uh, uh, discussed in our round, um, brainstorming session, it is important to establish a venue for us uh, to uh, be able to identify issues and challenges um, in the use of evaluation in our respective parliaments um, and that to exchange ideas, share experience on how we can be effectively use um, evaluation in, in, in parliament and uh, at the same time to be able to mobilize support and assistance because again based on my experience if you uh, by yourself it's very difficult really to, to uh, tap into the assistance or support uh, from uh, from, um, uh, from, from various institutions. Like uh, the reasons why I was able to participate in the IPDA training is because of my participation in the Global Parliamentarians Forum uh, for Evaluation uh, uh, that, that was held. And so I became part of this uh, network. So it's very important really to be part of a group in order for us to be able to uh, tap into the assistance of uh, these uh, development partners. And of course, if we can have this uh, regular dialogue or forum, we can possibly also establish a repository of resources. And in order to establish this forum, as I uh, pointed out, uh, there are very important inputs that uh, we have to look into, and I think that will be a basis for our discussion later on. And that is to look into the, into the membership, um, the organizational structure, as well as the systems and procedures, our, the resources that are needed in order to establish the forum, and uh, will be, I'm, I'm sure that the city will be doing the facilitation in order to be able to discuss uh, the needed inputs for us to be able to establish uh, this Asia Pacific parliamentarians for evaluation. Thank you very much, and a good day again, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Dr. Romulo. So, quickly moving on to the discussion round, we actually overrun the time. So, uh, we have one question. Uh, from uh, Jivdin from Sri Lanka, to what extent uh, the evaluation tools and principles are being utilized in parliament work and how the key evaluation criteria are, are measured in oversight and rule making process. Uh, if uh, Kiran can answer this question really quickly because uh, we have only two minutes for questions. Thank you, Hesiti, and, and thank you very much. Um, for that interesting question from uh, Joadim. Um, that's a really important question to ask. And I think that's one that you should be asking of your parliamentarians. While there may be some use of evaluation within parliamentary work, I think what we all recognize is at the moment there's not enough. And we really need more use of sound evidence from evaluations as a basis for policy and lawmaking. 
We all can see quite clearly what happens when policies and legislation is produced without using evidence, without using evaluative uh, process. It often leads us into situations where uh, policies, in fact, can be quite um, damaging to citizens and society. So I think to answer your question, I would encourage you to, to, to engage with your elected parliamentarians and really hold them to account um, as they should be holding government to account. Thank you. Thank you, Kiran. And Dr. Romulo, do you have anything to add to this question? Yeah, sometimes uh, this uh, criteria um, seems to be very technical. And I think that that's uh, also one of the reasons uh, why our parliamentarians are sometimes uh, shied away from uh, this uh, forum, because they, to, to them, uh, evaluation team seems to be very technical. But uh, I think uh, these are very important criteria that uh, um, that can be real, uh, that um, parliamentarians can really um, identify with. So uh, I think uh, again uh, with the proper dialogue and discussions and this sharing of uh, ideas through this forum will help a lot uh, in uh, in order for us to really make use of this evaluation criteria uh, in the in the work of parliament. Uh, in particular for the oversight function. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Romulo. So as for now, I can't see any other questions. But if, we, if our participants have any further questions, please uh, feel free to add it in the chat box. So if time permits, we will try to answer them. Now it's time to uh, appoint an interim committee for the forum and discuss our next steps. Uh, with Dr. Romulo's presentation, I guess everyone is aware of the purpose and the objectives of the forum. And for you to have a better idea, I'll quickly go through the task list of the interim committee, which we are going to appoint now. Uh, as the initial steps, the committee is expected to draft a constitution for the forum and develop the formal structure for the committee. Of course, uh, we can uh, provide some examples for you, uh, for your reference, and our resource uh, persons are there to help you if you need any kind of assistance. And then the committee has to organize monthly or bi-monthly meetings with members, depending on the frequency that they are going to agree upon and availability of the members. This interim committee might take up to six months to complete these, their tasks, and to keep the momentum going, they are expected to organize some activities for the forum. The interim committee will uh, consist of seven members, five parliamentarians, and two parliament research staff. We are pleased to announce that Honorable Natalia Nikitenko from Kyrgyzstan, Honorable uh, Tilakaraja from Sri Lanka, and Honorable Ramesh Padyal from Nepal, and Dr. Romulo uh, from Philippines uh, have already agreed to be our interim committee members. Thank you so much for stepping forward and taking the leadership for this wonderful initiative. So we are calling for two more parliamentarians and a Richard, uh, one research staff member to be a part of this. Uh, do we have anyone who is willing to take part? Of course, either uh, you can um, uh, there is question, uh, your hands and speak. We will open the floor to you or you can just put it in the chat bar. And uh, please feel free to share your thoughts and suggestions with us too. The floor is all yours. And Honorable Tilakaraja and Dr. Romulo, if you have anything to add, please go ahead. I think I have nothing to add at this point. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we have only around five to eight minutes to wrap it up, wrap it up this uh, session. So if our participants have any uh, suggestions or any thoughts to be shared, please feel free to unmute yourself and yeah. uh, so who's uh, uh, this is Natalia Nikitenko from Kyrgyzstan yes, uh, let me just say a few words uh, it's really a great pleasure to welcome uh, the launch of the Asia Pacific Forum for Evaluation. I believe as a member of the Global Parliamentarians Forum, I believe it's so important step forward to unite the efforts of many members of parliaments and professionals, evaluators, staff of the parliaments uh, to raise the agenda of evaluation because our world is changing so rapidly in different parts of the
the world, people, they really need to see more uh, responsible, more transparent management from the decision makers. And the role of the parliament uh, as the uh, bridge be between the people and the executive power, lawmaking function, having the oversight and budgeting function is crucial. So when the parliament and members of the parliaments, they are equipped with evaluation, understanding evaluation tools and means, that means that they will serve more efficiently to the people, to their society, to the globe. And I strongly, strongly believe that starting together, raising the agenda of evaluation, uh, building the capacity of members of parliaments and the parliamentarian staff all together with evaluation instruments and tools, learning from each other, sharing the knowledge, we will be more efficient all together. So I really welcome launch of this um, Asian Pacific Parliamentarians Forum for Evaluation. And I think that setting up the interim committee agenda, the constitution, uh, the plan, this is the very first but so necessary step because we already have so many to say, so many to share, and so many to discuss. So I just want to wish uh, everyone good luck and rise agenda of evaluation will be something very important, our input actually uh, in the global agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Natalia, for your inputs. It's really valuable. And uh, so do we have uh, uh, parliamentarians and uh, we invite one research staff members to be part of this interim committee and take the leadership and uh, guide the rest of the forum members. Uh, it's just, uh, as I uh, mentioned, the task is very simple. And of course, uh, we are uh, the, our resource persons and our team is there to help you. Uh, so, uh, MP Lato from Bhutan, uh, Jeev Dane from Sri Lanka, we have uh, uh, Anjanabe Kohn, Aisha Gudagama, Ms. Aisha Gudagama. Dali, anyone who's uh, willing to take uh, the membership of this interim committee, please um, your hand. Honorable Tilakaraja and Dr. Romulo, you can also join me with the facilitating if you need anything to be added. Yeah. So anyone who's um, we encourage you to volunteer with us. There's a volunteer in the chat box. Okay, so yeah, um, I'm a, a Honorable Latu is uh, willing to be in the uh, interim committee. Yeah. Thank you, uh, uh, Honorable Latu. So we have uh, now one parliamentarian and we need- Thank you so much. Do you have anything to add, uh, Honorable Latu? I'm sorry. Uh, not really. I think uh, everything is covered. And so I'm so happy that I've been able to attend this regulation uh, forum. And I look forward to uh, learning more from this forum. And uh, I wish everyone a great success. So thank you so much. Thank you. So we are kind of running out of time. And we are like working within a strict time schedule. So it would be great uh, if. Uh, another parliamentarian and another parliament research staff member can step forward and volunteer with us for this interim committee. I would be very happy if uh, another parliamentary research staff will be part uh, of this uh, interim committee. <laughs> Okay, we have uh, uh, Mr. Achyadin from Sri Lanka at, uh, who's willing to be in the team. Thank you, uh, Mr. Achyadin, and welcome you to the interim committee. Uh, so uh, we now we have uh, another one, only one position actually for a parliamentarian. So do we have uh, any other parliamentarians who's joining with us today who's willing to take this uh, opportunity? I'm 
I'm sorry that I can't, uh, with your Zoom names, I can't identify whether you're a member of parliament or the visit staff member, so I can't invite you personally or individually. Please. Uh, okay, uh, we have, uh, I guess, as I remember from our the training, we do have uh, Honorable Amjad Ali, are you willing to take part of this committee? Uh, me. Okay, uh, Samja Dali is suggesting the name of Mr. Ataula for membership of the committee from parliamentary research staff. Um, we'll take it as a suggestion and uh, definitely we will get back to you on this because now we have um, one position for uh, the, uh, one of the parliamentarians. Uh, but definitely we will discuss, uh, I mean, the interim committee uh, can discuss this and get back to you. And I guess it's, it's fine. Uh, so maybe uh, we can move on because now we have seven members for the interim committee, uh, five uh, parliamentarians, uh, sorry, four parliamentarians and uh, two visits of members. So... Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for volunteering with us. And uh, this uh, interim committee and uh, celebrating the launch of Asia Pacific Parliamentary Forum for Evaluation. And as memory, we will now ask you, uh, our participants and speakers, to switch on your videos for a quick photo. Of them. Uh, production team, uh, please give us a cue when you're done. So I invite all of you to uh, switch on your cameras for a quick snap. Madhika, can you take the picture, please? Uh, yeah, I hope everyone has uh, switched on camera. Okay, thank you. Over to you, Asita. Uh, is Hasiti connected? Hasiti, are you there? Uh, Hasiti, over to you. I'm sorry, I guess I lost connection. So we will quickly move on to our next segment. Uh, I will inv now invite uh, Mr. Asil Kalugam Pitya uh, for the closing remarks. Uh, Mr. Asil is the president of Asia Pacific Evaluation Association. Asil, over to you. Uh, thank you very much, Asiti. Uh, thank you very much, uh, all the participants. Uh, for uh, joining this very important uh, event, launch of Asia Pacific Parliamentarians Forum for Evaluation. Uh, and we have a you know, good number of participation, uh, very active participation today, because I remember when the first Parliamentarians Forum was started in uh, 2013, only three Parliamentarians started this, and it, and then it became a global movement. Uh, of course, you know, parliament, three parliamentarians from uh, Asia region <coughs> started that. So uh, with that note, uh, I think this is uh, a good success today with good participation uh, from parliaments, uh, several parliaments in Asia. Uh, and interim committee appointment of an interim committee is also a key milestone. Uh, interim committee has a good responsibility, I think, uh, uh, to work on uh, 
certain things to establish the parliamentarians forum properly and uh, you know uh, take us through the next steps and asia pacific evaluation association will provide the secretariat support for the interim committee and this parliamentarians forum uh, and uh, we know that you know some of the parliaments already have uh, good examples of uh, institutionalization of evaluation uh, of course philippines is uh, also working hard and we want many parliaments to promote evaluation and uh, many of our countries face uh, challenges economic challenges and uh, governance issues even in sri lanka we have challenges nowadays uh, despite uh, the achievements in the parliament so with that uh, through this forum we can promote evaluation through our parliaments and with uh, uh, parliamentarians uh, so that's why interim committee can work on next steps and uh, establish the parliamentarians forum properly with uh, a formal committee formal uh, executive team for this parliamentarians forum and as asia pacific evaluation association we are happy to help you in your journey uh, finally i want to thank uh, again our team uh, uh, kiran uh, and Dr. Romulo for making uh, these presentations and also organizing this event together with Tapia team and Honorable Tilakaraja uh, for uh, being uh, uh, a very supportive uh, person for this uh, process uh, and also taking part in uh, the uh, interim committee. Uh, at the same time, uh, our uh, secretariat team, Madhuka, Randika, uh, Hasiti and production team, Punya and all. Uh, thank you very much. And thanks again to all the participants uh, and uh, also uh, Hasiti for great moderation today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sasela. So as a person who pushed the idea of Parliamentarians Forum for Evaluation in Asia Pacific to become a reality, uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, you are celebrating today's success uh, so let me move on. So congratulations to the appointed interim committee and congratulations to everyone for being a part of this successful launch of the forum. And definitely a huge thank goes to all of you for joining us and being with us till the end. Um, it was an amazing and wonderful experience and hope to see you soon with an activity organized by this forum. So keep in touch and stay safe. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.